So I think we can start. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our introductory webinar on how to develop a sustainability strategy. My name is Alice. I'm the um, head of the programs at the Global Compact Network Switzerland and Liechtenstein, and it's my real pleasure to welcome you all today. Um, before we start, I will show you some housekeeping rules. Um, Maura, if you can change the slide. Yes, perfect. Thank you. So um, the session is being recorded. The slides and the recording will be available after the webinar. We will speak English today, but you can uh, ask your question in French or German. And please make sure you mute it. Regarding questions, uh, please write your questions in the chat and we will take them up during the Q&A at the end. If you have a burning question, uh, you may uh, as well uh, raise your hand or unmute. Um, then next slide, please. The goal of the UN Global Compact is to make companies aware of the relevance of social, environmental and governance issues to their core business and to support companies in implementing good practices along the 10 principles. So through diverse learning and dialogue formats, such as today's webinar, we promote dialogue and knowledge sharing between companies and experts. Next slide, please. This webinar is part of a series on sustainability strategy and disclosure implemented by the experts team from Elevate. As you see on the slide, we start today with uh, the webinar on how to develop a sustainability strategy. So we just want with this webinar to give you a glimpse into this development. And then this will be followed on the 20th of September by an in-person training to develop a sustainability strategy. This will take place in Zurich. And if you have not yet registered, you are very welcome to do so. In October, we will go on with a webinar on the enhanced uh, communication on progress requirements and useful tips. So this is especially important for our UN Global Compact participants since as of 2023, you will all have to report along the new COP. Uh, we will finish the series on the 8th of November with a webinar on the introduction um, to reporting requirements in Switzerland and the European Union. So um, we will send you all the um, links for these webinars and trainings in our follow-up email tomorrow. So I wish you all a very good webinar today and um, see you after. I'm giving to, uh, sorry, I'm handing over to Maura Hegi from Elevate. Uh, she will be conducting the webinar today with uh, Julia Graber. And uh, I would like to thank you both already for, for the good collaboration. Thank you very much, Alice, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to all of you about uh, the development of sustainability strategies today. So welcome also from Team Elevate. Uh, as Alice has said, my name is Maura Higgi, and I would first like to lead you through the contents of today. I would briefly like to talk about the starting point, so more about the context of sustainability strategies, where they come from, why a company should have one, and what is there to consider when developing a strategy. Second, we will lead you through the whole strategy process step by step so that you have an idea of how to build your own strategy. And of course, we will have time to answer your questions and um, lead a discussion at the end and then have an outlook onto what's coming, although Alice already gave a pretty good overview on that. Maybe just a few words about Elevate, I'll be very quick. So we are a global sustainability consulting firm with four core areas. The field we speak about today is advisory. So we consult clients in the development of sustainability strategies, as well as reporting and communications. So disclosure, so this really is our core business, but also we, we are leading in supply chain assessments, meaning we identify risks that may occur in your supply chain. And we check for human rights exposures, um, human rights violations exposures, and 
just check that your, your company is in line with new regulations in Germany and Switzerland, but also in the EU. And we do analysis based on our own data platform. We have collected a valuable scope of data in thousands of audits in crucial manufacturing sites for mostly Western companies throughout Asia, but also other continents. And lastly, we support clients in their supplier program management, which means we work with suppliers to support and evaluate them in their journey to comply with sustainability and human rights requirements for, for your company. I've been with Elevate for three years and I oversee major strategy projects in industries such as pharma, finance and insurance, or also automotive, just to give you some examples. I like developing the strategic frameworks and roadmaps together with my clients to lead them into a sustainable future in which they can contribute to a sustainable planet, as well as influence their partners and customers to do the same. So maybe I will get to influence you today. So that would be my goal of today. Right, and uh, my colleague, Julia Graber. Thank you, uh, as Moa said, my name is Julia Graber. I'm also a consultant at Elevate here in the Zurich office in the strategy and disclosure team. Um, my focus also lays on the materiality assessments, the impact assessments and the strategy development. So together with Maura, uh, I had the chance to yeah, work with clients on their very exciting strategy processes. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, due to my studies, I also have a uh, quite familiar view on environmental topics. Thank you. So maybe let's talk about the, the context for sustainability strategy and see in, where, how you can get started or what you need to consider at the beginning. And from now on, please excuse me if I say company, I also mean different organizations, NPOs or just other institutions, but just for, for the uh, uh, easy purposes, let's call everybody companies. Right. So the question is why should companies have a strategy catered to sustainability or what drives companies in elaborating this sustainability strategy? Let me show you some of the reasons why companies develop such strategy and maybe you're here today because of one of them. Increasingly, sustainability figures among the criteria considered in various ratings and stock indices, for example, MSCI or the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, which means investors and stakeholder interests have therefore evolved and now include considerations of sustainability performance when directing their capital. The myriad of international frameworks and legal requirements covering the sustainability topics bespeak to the progression of international collaboration on the subject, be it voluntary or in mandatory form. So these are also very important to consider. Thirdly, companies have noticed that diversified sustainable business models can be even more profitable, which drives their own eagerness to strategically embed sustainability components in their products and business models. Furthermore, the public opinion of the global sustainability challenges can also not be neglected as consensus is that companies need to take on their responsibility and contribute to solving the most pressing issues. There are sustainability pioneers in every sector pressuring its competitors and peers to keep up with the leaders. So if you are in a sector that maybe have a, some, have a few of those sustainability pioneers, you might want to keep up with them. And lastly, as clients' generations become younger, uh, their demands continually change towards a more conscious consumption, which drives the market and companies automatically into a position where they need to be more sustainable to able to satisfy that demand. As we turn our eyes towards the international sustainability context, one can see that there are various valuable frameworks and regulations that guide companies into the right direction when it comes to goal setting and reporting, for example. Only five years ago, frameworks and regulations were asking for mere transparency and let's call them soft content regarding sustainability. Though late trends have shown that today they are increasingly demanding specific, let's call them hard content of a sustainability strategy, such as setting tangible goals and KPIs or writing concrete policies regarding topics such as human rights. So they become more solid and what they ask for or the requirements are growing by the, let's call it by the year. One example is the new Swiss reporting regulation that actually requires companies to develop a sustainability strategy and the associated policies. But don't worry, don't get lost in the myriad of frameworks. I know there are a lot. 
pick those that are most relevant for the formulation of, of the sound sustainability framework and that are tailored to your material topics or risk areas. For example, use the science-based targets for climate targets. Or another example, the most encompassing framework are the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals, counting over 160 specific sub-targets that companies can orient themselves along. And for example, get the SDG business benchmark from the Global Compact to really be able to set your targets or your strategy in line with those international frameworks. But now you might be asking, okay, what does a future fit sustainability strategy even look like and what are its co cornerstones? Let me show you a best practice example of an industrial company. Gormacaba published its strategy in 2021 and it contains all major aspects that are indispensable for a good sustainability strategy. The basis is formed by a strategic framework that defines focus areas and is in turn based on the identified material topics. It is crucial to clearly define the company's ambition levels, where the company wants to go and what it wants to achieve, and make the reference to the formerly mentioned international frameworks. Furthermore, the sustainability strategy is filled, should be filled with tailor-made and impactful targets that must be anchored with adequate indicators that allow measuring the company's performance. Otherwise, maybe all your ambitions might be lost if you cannot check, balance, and measure your performances. Consequently, also, a company needs actions and measures that are defined and communicated that help the company reach the defined targets within the set time horizon. And finally, and obviously, any strategy needs a roadmap to implement and anchor the strategy. So what do you want to do? And so when do you want to do it? And how do you want to do it? It's the same in any strategy process. Maybe let's zoom in to the framework that we have at hand here and see that it covers all of them just at mentioned aspects. Maybe let's quickly go through example. You see the framework, they have three focus areas, people, planet, partnerships. If you focus into planet, we see they have, um, they have defined an overarching claim to open the doors to a low carbon economy. And then they have described an aim. They have identified the material topics within that strategic pillar, and they have named key targets even link them to the SDGs. And if you'd go deeper into the strategy that you can find online, you can see that they have also set a baseline and have even beyond the key targets, identified more targets that they follow within strategic area. So if you need a good example, you can orient yourself along this. And now I would like to hand over to the next section where Julia will lead you through the process. We will take, take you step by step and of how to develop a future fit sustainability strategy. Thank you. So let's have a look how a strategy development process looks like step by step. And we would recommend these five, uh, five step approach, building up a comprehensive sustainability strategy, beginning with the materiality analysis and ending on the communication with this reporting approach. So on the left, you can see the materiality analysis focusing on two perspectives, the impact on sustainability development, um, which focuses on the impacts that arise from the company's business activities on environment, society and economy all along the value chain. And also the inward perspective, looking at risks and opportunities towards a company arising from sustainability topics. And in the end of this process, oh. <laughs> yes, in the end of this process, maybe I just go through all the steps and then we have a look at it in detail. So at the end of this process of the materiality analysis, you have this these material topics, which uh, are the basis for the strategic framework uh, on which you can see the overall long-term vision and the ambition of a company, and it aligns them and the customized focus areas, which are created to bundle these material topics. And the strategic framework lays the basis for the sustainability strategy in which the concrete targets and KPIs are defined and the necessary measures find place. And to bring it all into the company, the fourth step is very important with the governance implementation of the strategy. So by developing a roadmap and measures, 
the alignment within the organizational structure and the allocation of resources and responsibility, the before rather yeah, theoretical part of setting targets and KPIs is brought into the organization and into day-to-day -day life. And in the end, after all these steps, you can report about your efforts and maybe also on your performance and success. And this also gives you the opportunity to cover every uh, topic very detailed with a, yeah, with a detailed management approach, which you laid down in your strategy and your measures. So maybe your company has already conducted one of these steps. Maybe uh, it already conducted a materiality analysis or already of reports, but we would highly recommend to follow these steps. Maybe jump on, on the second step if you already conducted a materiality analysis, but we found that these steps are bringing you towards a, a comprehensive result. And in the end, the goal is really to develop a future food sustainability strategy, which can function as a corn store of your sustainability report. And if you need to fulfill requirements, maybe from, from the government, such as Switzerland, if you fall under the new regulation or from the EU coming from the CSRD, and this gives you a great basis for your reporting. So let's deep dive in the first step. As I said, the goal of the materiality analysis is to find out what are the topics, which are the most important topics for your company. And we start with a long list, which covers all the topics that arise from, yeah, from your industry or company specific targets, but also taking into account regulatory requirements or yeah, frameworks like GRI, the SDGs or the UN Global Compact. And this long list is the list of potential material topics. And to find out which topics are material, we go to the seven, second step, in which we prioritize each of these topics from two perspectives. So we have a look at each topic and evaluate what are the outward impacts. So what is the severity and the likelihood that the impact through the business activity occur for, uh, towards the topic from the business activity of your company. Um, so this is rather the sustainability view outside. So what is impacted by your company or yourself, your activities? And then the inward impact, the inward perspective has a look, what are the risks and opportunities that arise from these sustainability topics towards your company? So what are the, yeah, the effects that they have on your business success, for example? And potential risks might be reputational risks or uh, yeah, um, operational risks or regulatory risks. But there are also opportunities from these topics such as, um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, uh, differentiation opportunities. And in the end, your result can be shown as a matrix looking at both these uh, perspectives, having the outward impact on one axis and the inward impacts on the other one. And based on their ranking, the, the dot on the matrix finds a place. And on the top right corner, you can see the prioritized topics, uh, which you can then choose as your material topics. So these are yeah, the, the most important topics from both perspectives, but be aware if you're looking or reporting according to GRI, there the focus lies more on the outward impact. So GRI doesn't allow to, to, to leave out topics that have a high outward impact. So if you have a topic that rates high on the outward impact, but low on the inward impact, you can see this line here, it would normally not be included, but with the new universal standards, this one would have to be considered. The CSRD and also the new Swiss regulation uh, favors the double materiality in which both of these uh, perspectives are considered. So after you have selected your material topics, the next step would be the sustainability framework. 
you can see on the left several sustainability frameworks. So you see not all of them look the same. They are very customized. And the sustainability framework serves as, funda as foundation and as an overview of your ambitions and visions of a company. And it shows at a glance what a company is aiming for, but also how the material topics are allocated in the framework. And it has several functions. For one, it gives a common understanding on your visions, both internally and externally, and sets long-term vision levels, mostly in line with the UN Agenda 2030, which gives a yeah, great guidance on that. But the focus areas, which are usually three to five, also incorporate the material topics and they, they are the basis for the further strategy development. And then you can yeah, have the foundation for the development of specific goals, KPIs and actions. And it also gives a clear structure that the sustainability report and other communications can follow. And to sum it up, the sustainability framework serves as a bridge between material topics, sustainability strategy, and sustainable communication towards stakeholders. So where, if we have a look at the example uh, on the next slide, exactly. Uh, this is the, the framework of Georg Fischer and they have three pillars, uh, people, planet, and products. And for each of the pillars, they have an ambition, which is for people, it's becoming a great place to work, for planet, becoming a net zero footprint company, and for products, becoming to go the go-to place to sustainable products. So you see these ambitions are more vague and are not as yeah, precise as targets, but this is not yeah, the, the goal of an ambition. It should direct the, the company's purpose and also the, yeah, the overall vision of the company. And you can see here per pillar, the material topics are allocated and they even prioritize them into basics and priority topics. And on the bottom, you can see they have also all allocated enablers or identified enablers per each of the topics uh, of the pillars, which also help for further development of the strategy so they can find what, yeah, they give the basis for future measures and so on. Thank you, Julia. Um, now let's get into the core of the sustainability strategies. If you want to call it like this, you could call the strategic framework the head and the sustainability strategy and the targets uh, the heart piece because you need to live by them. Right. So when it, once ambition levels are set, it's time to dive deeper into each material topic and define what your company wants to contribute and achieve and summarize this in a strategic document. Meaningful targets are crucial for an effective sustainability strategy. They need to go even beyond smart, so beyond specific, measurable, ambitious, relevant, and time-bound. They need to be aligned with the global context, like, as we said before, be oriented by all those frameworks we were talking about before. They need to be long-term and ambitious. Sustainable development isn't reached in a couple of years. Mostly, sustainability targets have a five to 10 year horizon. Companies are, for example, now setting targets until 2030, as the UN agenda is also the reference uh, um, and it's set until 2030. So the more the targets need to be result and impact oriented, rather than formulating a target re regarding an input or an output. So for example, the amount of euro you want to invest, the target should focus on the outcome or better even the impact. For example, the number of people you have reached or the number of, number of livelihoods you were able to improve. So focus more on what you want to achieve and not what you put in in order to achieve this. And lastly, they need to be concrete and understandable in order to be communicated and followed internally and externally. So they also serve as a tool for motivation for your employees, but also as a communication towards your uh, customers. And obviously, setting the adequate KPIs is just as necessary to keep track of the company's sustainability efforts and measure their progress. You can find inspiration and guidance through the same frameworks mentioned before or conduct, a, for example, a peer or industry, industry benchmark to see what your peers measures and then do it better than them. 
As a next step, your company needs to identify measures and actions that are needed in order to reach the set targets. Hence, those measures need to be laid out in a clear roadmap to get the company to the targeted level. Here you can see an example. It's just a schematic representation of the material topic, the targets until 2025, what KPIs have been chosen, and then what resulting measures need to be taken in the next few quarters or years until 2025, when the target level should be achieved. And lastly, as we all know, a strategy is only as good as it is implemented and lived. So the governance of the sustainability management needs to function within the existing organization rather than be treated or constructed as something separate. Otherwise, you run the risk of sustainability not having the same relevance as other areas of, of um, action within your company. On the right, you can also see a schematic governance structure based on existing entities that already exist within the company, plus so, uh, two added um, sustainability function, the sustainability manager and a sustainability committee that might have already existed, the committee as such, but that you have um, added the additional responsibility of also caring for sustainability within the existing structure. Several components then need to be defined in order to anchor sustainability management. If you look at the list, uh, what you need to do is you need to talk about the responsibilities and decision-making powers within that structure. Will it always be the highest governance body or the management that decide on sustainability, on spending, but also on targets? Or do you give certain power, decision-making power to the sustainability committee or the manager? Then you need to define activities and content of work. So who is doing what? You need to talk about the composition of the entities. And here we always recommend to have representatives of all business areas, as you can see in the light blue um, field. So from HR, from sourcing, from finance, from production, you need to make sure that you get all the people aboard when, when you talk about sustainability, because it's a transversal topic in your company. You need to obviously talk about the required resources for involved people and not just give them the task of taking care of sustainability on top of their maybe already 100% job. So really talk about how much time you need to um, allocate or how much resources you need to allocate to this. Um, define the, the process, or the sequence and the decision-making path. So where do the decisions flow? and talk about if or whether the internal people have the, the required uh, competencies or whether you need to maybe get support from external experts. It's crucial that the right people need to be equipped with the right resources and capabilities in order to push sustainability forward within your company. And as we've said before, check for which memberships and requirements you are eligible or voluntary, but also mandatory. So which ones of the many that we showed before are relevant for you and check which policies you might need to still formulate in order to be compliant with those requirements. And then lastly, and as clients often say, do good and talk about it, which is not so wrong. <laughs> so the reporting approach. How do you communicate about your sustainability uh, efforts and achievements? You can use your sustainability report as an internal tool to motivate and lead your employees, as an external tool to win customers and investors, but also as a tool to uphold your commitment and show the transparency as a company that you've committed to. From experience, the process takes between four to six months. You start with a reporting concept. I'm oh, sorry. There we go. You start with a reporting concept that is based on the sustainability framework previously developed. Usually the report and the chapter structure follows the same logic. So you have the material topics which usually build up the chapters, you have your strategic pillars, and this is how your reporting should look like. You need to define the format. Do you want to have only online content? Do you want a PDF? What kind of language should it be? Do you want more graphics? So this is very, this is, I think, the, the creative area where your company can really position itself in how it wants to talk about its sustainability progress. 
the most difficult part is collecting your data and information and edit it in order it, for it to be ready to publish. This is the trickiest because most companies don't have a data management system in place for the needed type of information. I'll give you an example. If you don't haven't done your carbon footprint yet and you want to collect or get all the three scopes, one, two, and three, collecting this data for all your maybe international sites can be very challenging as you maybe don't have the same access or they vary greatly one from the other. So this really is key to get your uh, data management system on point, not only for the greenhouse gas accounting, but also, for example, new KPIs you might need. You might have the numbers, but you might need to define new KPIs also in HR or in other fields. And then you need to get internal capabilities or maybe get an external expert to um, make a plausibility check for your data. Third step, the report writing. And to be honest, sometimes if the internal resources are available, our clients or companies sometimes write the report themselves, which is totally fine, but mostly resources are not available. So also you can find external um, consultants or uh, agencies that can write the content for you. Very important, and as we've mentioned multiple times, I think is define which reporting requirements you actually uh, have to comply with. So, or even if you want to meet certain standards voluntarily and get certain certifications, I'm thinking about GRI or SASB, um, uh, or, and this is going to be more mandatory, T50, CSRD, and all the other uh, frameworks. And maybe you want to get external assurance for more um, uh, um, validity of your report. Last step, communicate. And the beautiful thing, if you do this five-step process that we've been showing you is you have so much valuable content that you can use it for further communication, for campaign. Uh, maybe you have a live website where numbers automatically update uh, every week or every month, or maybe even other channels that you, um, that you have and communicate through with your clients. So really this content, you, you can use it and spread it and talk about what you're doing. As I said, win your customers, win your investors, and win again or keep your employees motivated and happy. So this, these are the five steps um, that we suggest you go through in order to get a sound sustainability strategy. Now that sounds very easy, doesn't it? Just five steps. Okay, I get it. It might be a bit more difficult and you need um, uh, uh, enough time and resources and expertise to be able to do that. Maybe you're ready to elaborate your own strategy now, or at least I hope so, but in case not, I will give you uh, some more insights, uh, some insight tips, and you're welcome to join in the next session um, in the step-by-step -step training we do in two weeks. All right, to the insight tips. Really calculate with approximately nine months that will your whole strategy project will take. Um, because the different steps require different amounts of coordination. If you think about the parts, the step three, where you actually define the targets, from experience, I can let you know that this is a lot of negotiation, internal negotiation of the target values and who needs to contribute what to those targets. This sometimes takes two months, sometimes it takes six months. It's really um, dependent on your internal structure, your culture, your internal policy. The people involved. What you need are strong ambassadors for sustainability. Maybe have a sponsor that is really high on sea level um, or have various that really carry the message into each business area. It is essential to include all representatives from all business areas. Otherwise, you might, uh, um, you might not get everybody on board and then uh, you lag behind in your targets. So this is very crucial. Remember that it is an iterative, interactive, and integrative procedure and development. So once, when you think you're almost done, you maybe open a box again, you talk about one target and you notice, oh, we have to go all the way back to the ambition and maybe recalibrate. That's normal, happens to everybody. So you get new insights, you gain new insights as you go along the procedure. Maybe you need to sometimes take a couple of steps back in order to push forward again. 
However, very important, all my milestones should be validated by a steering committee or the, the board or the management so that along your way, you really have that security of we're going into the right direction. It's not just we're not just in a sustainability bubble. We have the right people involved. Management is behind us and go forward. So also to the buy in on top of, uh, on the right hand side on top, you really need this approval to really go forward. Uh, otherwise, you lack it's going to be a paper tiger. Maybe the strategy is going to look nice, but you can't really do anything with it. And we don't really want that. Uh, for the resources, they are very, very phase dependent. And also, um, if, you've, if you already have professionals or experts, uh, sustainability delegates or sustainability managers, or if you need to rebuild everything from scratch. And also, as I said, uh, in other phases, coordination can, can vary greatly. The costs. Um, this is um, concerns maybe like greenhouse gas accounting if you want an external company to help you with that or an agency that supports you in writing or if you want sustainability expertise uh, such as Elevate to support you in the process and um, yeah that really depends on the level of support you need. These are my insight tips that I would like to give to you. And I think now we have time for questions and answers. 